Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the party uh, for the meeting that they had with Comrade Amiyumi, uh, Africa, crisis, Africa and the Ebola crisis, and um, led the way and leading the fight against Ebola, both the multinational corporation and capitalism. I think that was a great contribution to the struggle in West Africa uh, as we're seeing it happen now. I think also that we should translate that video in French so that it could actually be used in various African and Haitian community. Um, I think the midterm election, uh, we probably won't see much more coverage as we did around the question of Ebola. Not even from Obama, the Democratic administration, or from the Republican, because it's clear that they've been using it for their bourgeois election and their campaigns. And as I saw today in the New York Times, I didn't see any coverage on the question of Ebola. The Obama administration and its 3,000 troop, which it had sent down um, to West Africa, um, is actually served, uh, hasn't served any function as of yet, no more than an occupying army of West Africa. The 17 hospitals or tents or hospitals uh, that they were supposed to develop, as of yesterday, according to one of the majors, none of them has been developed. They say it's the rain, they say it's this, it's that. None of them have been developed. What their function was down there was to become an occupying army on the question when workers and people start fighting back against the terror of Ebola and for their rights and for their social needs, they be there to occupy. We got to remember a couple of weeks ago in Sierra Leone, it was one such rebellion they named the riot in Sierra Leone on the question of Ebola. But this military force there was there to make sure that Ellen Johnson, Sarif, the president who's represented by the IMF, be the next president by canceling the election and naming that Ebola was the issue. She even went far enough as to try to cancel a constitution, but it was the workers in the hospital and the burial ground and the nurses and the doctors say, no, you will not cancel our constitution. So it is a different form of struggle that's happening there. Right now, six countries out of 13 West African countries is affected by Ebola. Six. Six is affected. Six out of 13 countries. So we have a development there where you have like Eagle Watch, this economic military alliance that's really the colonial military base, uh, economic and military in all the West African countries. And that wasn't even enough for the United States. They father sent Afrikan down with Eagle Watch and sent their 3,000 force military bases. This is what's happening. And then you have people raising the question that all this suffering and instruction on Ebola is happening because of the Civil War 14 years ago. 14 years ago. Well, what about the war that France just had last year uh, in Maui in the aftermath of Libya? What about the war that France just had in Cote d'Ivoire a couple of years ago? What about the murder of Forday in Sierra Leone? These are all continuous occupation for resources in that particular area. So we face this type of situation with the Ebola crisis down in West Africa. And now, like Larry, uh, Larry Hales will speak on, between the is in that particular area, another type of development. When I said it's Africa, the Nazian contact me over the question of the Iranian person, student being denied enrollment in the school in New Jersey by Governor Crispy. And they were so upset about it, they put out a statement right away by the Rwandan in uh, New York, uh, Connecticut, and Jersey, denouncing this, but also defacing that the way that the Rwandan government handled the question of Ebola was like anybody else was doing. It was a 21-day incubation period on quarantine. It was taken out of contact. It was attack on Africa not just West Africa now, and in any way that you go up and down the street now, whether you're African, it's stigma. It don't, it's not West Africa anymore, that shows that. And two, uh, last week in Oklahoma, another group of African was attacked on the question of Ebola from the Wyandan community. Matter of fact, racism, if you're black skin and you look African, you will be subject 
This is what's going on with the question of Ebola. This is why we need immediate intervention on that particular question. Now we know of the colonial situation uh, that was developed here, so-called the free society for black people um, involving Liberia. But it's also the same situation was surviving, um, involving Sierra Leone and Canada and Nova Scotia. So this colonial history is imperialism. So it's not just a medical situation, it's not just to those particular areas. I like to name two development that we've been working on recently around the question of Ebola, and one referred to the paper is Act Up Against Ebola. Teresa and some other comrades sent me it, and I saw it on Facebook. I went to the Raleigh, and the event is in there, and there was a right on Raleigh at Bellevue Hospital raising the issue of health care worker and raising solidarity for the West African community. Our forward ACT UP asked me to be in touch with the West African community and I was and it's a pending meeting that they would have next week seeing how could they help the West Africans and help the nurses and doctors on the question of Ebola. The other situation was Last week, Michael and I went to a very important meeting at the Episcopalian Church by the bishops and everybody else who all these folks are. But they were having an event um, actually um, uh, commending and giving solidarity to each and every person that died from Ebola, from Sierra Leone, Guinea, and um, Liberia. A very small turnout, uh, probably about uh, 100 people in all, 70%. Um, uh, 80% West African, like all these, all these cases has been very segregated, um, very segregated. You know, it's surprising. You talk about the goddamn South, and I'm talking about from the meeting in the church to that meeting to the meeting uh, of war against Ebola in the church, it was four white people in the whole meeting, and Gary was one of them, and three was reporters. And every event to I went to so far, including D12 with 99% black, all the meeting was segregated. I mean, that's stigma in one thing, but that's not full outreach in another thing. It's not being dealt with properly, and that's the way a party, from the question of a class view, we could play a role like we did with, with ACT UP, like we did now of going to the church. And Michael raised in this church solidarity to the bishop, and he uh, acknowledged Michael as being in this veterans organization and giving solidarity to the fight against Ebola. And Michael fathered to get in touch with the national organization, I think his name is Fernstein uh, in St. Louis, to actually look for solidarity. Teacher, doctor, male person, students, psychiatrist, professor, uh, construction worker, whatever you want to name, you ain't got to look for no special interest to be in solidarity with the people in West Africa because all of them, that whole society is being crushed and all these workers is being affected. So you can find various means. To, all the schools are closed. Ports are closed. Everything, nothing is going in or out. At that particular, one of the particular meetings, the, professor, um, the ambassador from Nigeria actually explained how could you fight the question of Ebola like what they did in Nigeria and offer his help to all of West Africa or any community or working group or health workers that was working around it. Those are the many issues that we have, uh, the latest development dealing uh, with the question around Ebola. Now what need to be done? We need a mass educational campaign, like we did around the question of HIV AIDS, like we did around the question of the caravan, um, on dealing with the question of immigration. People need to be told, people need to be given vehicles, demand made to be made on de Blasio, on Como, on uh, um, Como, on President Obama, uh, on the pharmaceutical companies, and we know them all, we've been researching it. These demands need to be made because we cannot take that role of the amount of resources and it's their resources from these many different countries and the immigrant and migrant workers who come here and help build this country and the theft of their colonial resources of gold, diamond, Sierra Leone, gold, diamond, coffee, coffee whatever you want to name, this is, this is what's at stake. So this is what we need to be doing is sort of having like a mass educational campaign. And we are working with three West African groups from Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. It's the um, Africa Ebola Crisis Committee, who have joined with us in calling on an action 
to have a mass educational campaign supporting the West African community, making these basic human rights demands on our government, and actually supporting the health care workers. And what we wish to do in that, and taking it up with the party and mass organization, we had an opportunity to speak to Ramsey Clark. Um, we're quite sure that ACT UP, the way they're talking, will be a part of this. We'd like to call an action on December the 9th. And we like to go, and the West African actually raised the question of having a march. It wasn't us. We were talking about a rally and all the people, important people that we could get at this rally. And they said, why don't we have a march? We need to get the people so that we could speak to them. Why don't we march from the Harlem State Office building to what we were then looking into with the Schomburg or the Black um, uh, uh, National Black Theater and then have a rally? So this is what I, I'm proposing and what we have been discussing is to actually do this because it will take us intervening to make a change. And I bet you, I bet my political life on it right now to each and every one of you, tomorrow, the next day, and the next day, you will hear less and less about Ebola. And I guarantee if we don't do it, nobody else will, and it's our historical task. Now, Finally, I have some buttons here, and I want to make a appeal out to all and any visitors and anyone that you can get a hold of that we need help with this. Uh, we, we just can't do things economically or organizationally. We need help with it. So we ask people to purchase a button because we need to raise $1,600. Anybody want to buy this button for $1,600? Oh, oh, 1600 Okay, Monica, we hold up on that. You know what, right next, I got your hand, Monica, you're in there. But a button or any donation or anyone that you could actually do, um, please um, help us raise the resources to do this very important, needed solidarity actions to put us in solidarity with the whole of, of Western, West Africa and to fight the multinational corporation. Finally, um, we ask people to join us in an organizing meeting on November the 22nd at 2 p.m. right here to bring people who've been coming around us, uh, friends and people that we will be in touch with to be a part of mobilizing this rally. The West Africans and, and, um, and Staten Island say they would have a meeting on November the 19th, which is a, 30, um, which is, um, a Thursday, in Staten Island to take up the same measures of mobilizing that community. We're going to make a vent page for these two meetings like tomorrow and really try to get people out so we won't be taking this on by ourselves. And eventually that we wouldn't be waiting for a vent to intervene, that we will intervene now. Thank you.